literally is now stepping up and they're really wanting to be involved. And so I we saw, we saw a shift in the past three weeks where now the young people are actually working hard for different programs that we want to kind of, um, you know, bring up. So um, it's been it's been frustrating here and there, but overall, I think I'm just proud of being able to ask for help and and just seeing the people see that I sincerely need it and um, them just jumping on board with um, this federation. So I'm just very pleased with my community. But overall, by the grace of God, my family is doing well. I'm doing well at work. My husband's doing fine. There's a lot of shifting happening with schools, as you know, because they're coming in. So I'm just, you know, patiently waiting to see what the Lord would say and how things are working and make sure that my kids are safe and the family surrounding is safe as well. And I'm moving. Wow. Out of all <laughs> Sold my house three, four weeks ago and in the middle of a change, my new house is not ready till November. So there's a lot going on in my life right now that that's why I reached, reached out for help. So I'm very pleased with my group. All right, let's uh, keep Edwin in prayer. That's a lot. And you don't have big kids. You got little babies, too. So, yeah, so let's keep them in prayer. And thank you for being vulnerable with us. We, we love you, and we're definitely praying for you. Who else would like to share how they've been doing during this time as a youth leader? Brother Keith, go right ahead. Um, well, this, this past weekend, we just had our um, virtual adventure camp out, which was something new to all of us, you know, as we were doing it on Zoom. It turned out fantastic. Yes, yes it did. Yes, it did. And I think that, um, well, Shelby, you, Pastor Washington, you all did a fantastic job. Shelby's um, people that helped her, they did a fantastic job. It was just unbelievable. I need that technology myself when I get ready to start with my adventure club, because we have uh, registered our adventure club. We're gonna start next month. So it's another challenge, but through the grace of God, we are going to make it. My wife, she is at my right hand. Everywhere I go, she's right there. We cut the grass at the church, she's right there. So, you know, I'm just blessed to have her blessed to have my family, my daughter. She loves to cook and I love to eat. So she's in there cooking right now and I'm, I'm going to enjoy it once I get, get to it. Um, but um, God is so good. I've been through some things um, through the year. Uh, I, had, I was diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer um, back in November and then it gave me some treatments. And in May, I ended my treatments, and everything is fine right now. Amen. Amen. I went to the doctor, and they said everything is, is gone. So I'm praising the Lord for that. But just keep us all in prayer. I'm, I'm going to keep all of you all in prayer. I pray for our conference because it's a big change. It is a big change, and we have to learn how to do things differently. And that's all I have to say right now. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Hallelujah about the prostate cancer um, that has moved forward. Oh, uh, what a blessing that is, man. And I'm surprised your wife isn't in camera with you. That's how close y'all are. And so uh, we thank God for you. Let's take a few more. We just, before we get into business or anything like that, I just want to make sure you're all right. Um, is there anybody else who, oh, there she is, there she is. <laughs> That's my friend. Yes, yeah, she, she was working on adventurous stuff. Okay. Uh, and Shelby, he brought up the adventure camping weekend. Shelby and her team, I had nothing to do with it. Uh, Shelby and her team just did a fantastic job. Hundreds of kids uh, just enjoying uh, camping in their own houses. Uh, just creative ministry. We, uh, we, we didn't have to do a way forward meeting for the adventurers because uh, they got their stuff together. I mean, they're just on top of it. And so Shelby's just a dynamic leader and we thank God for her. And she's actually on the call and we'll hear from her a little while, uh, a little later. Let me hear from a, a couple more people who'd like to share how you've been, um, how you doing. Is there anyone else who'd like to share?
Okay, Tyler, go ahead. <laughs> and you got you're a newlywed too, so go ahead, Tyler. <laughs> share share about your experiences. Um, well, things have been pretty pretty smooth, all things considered. It can be pretty tough sometimes to keep track of my already small group at times, but I'll say that it's been going pretty well. We've still managed to do, you know, Youth Day every fourth Sabbath here at New Gainesville. Um, we actually started back in March, you know, a little Friday night youth group where we do like Bible study or just talk in a very sort of casual way. And I was actually been quite pleased with the turnout. It ebbs and flows every, t you know, every now and again, but overall just seeing young people you know showing up before i get there has yeah. been certainly quite uplifting um, especially during these times and the participation has been you know pretty great all things considered can you know burn out just a little bit can get a little bit you know draining at times especially having to you know adjust to this sort of forum but i can't really complain too much awesome man Awesome. And you're doing good work, doing good work. Uh, how long has it been since wedding day? Uh, um, I hope I'm not getting you in trouble. About eight months. Okay. About eight months. And a about couple eight days. months. Eight months. All right. Congratulations. Uh, yes, man. Congratulations. All right. Let's take one more. One more. Is there anyone else want to share just how you're doing? Um, if you're, you know, just how you've been dealing with all that's been going on. Are you all right? Is anybody else? Did I see your hand, Sister Lockett? Okay, okay. Anyone else? Curtis, how you doing, man? Tell us how things been going in in Vietnam. <laughs> hey, sir. Um, life is okay. It's going good. Um, you know, I I rested pretty much the rest of the whole summer. Um, you know, teaching just say had nothing to do. Um. <laughs> So getting back into the swing of things with the students is it's it's getting there, you know they they are adjusting. They still want to come back to school, but you know can't do that. So um, definitely I've been doing doing well, keeping spirits up. Um, you know since I hadn't been able to you know go out to eat much, I've been cooking at home more. So I've added a few more recipes, like I did fettuccine alfredo last week, and then um, baked chicken the week before that. So you know got me thinking I can become a chef. So hey, you know God is good. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's been going well. We're trying to um, definitely keep in touch with our youth and, you know, just definitely checking on them. We did a um, senior drive through, you know, checking on our seniors a couple of months back. Just, you know, like a way for aid and stuff. Just let them know that, hey, you know, they ain't alone because, you know, they yeah, need, some, need some stuff too. So we're just trying to definitely keep in touch and find more ways to do that. All right. All right. Well, I want to pray a blessing over you now um, that God continues to keep you. Um, sometimes it's hard to talk about what we're going through with church people. I understand that. I understand that. And I know you may have shed some tears during this time. Uh, some of you have lost loved ones during this time or employment. Um, never base your worth on what you do for the church. I'm grateful for everything you do. But God loves you even if you do nothing. And so do I. So do I. Um, even if you have to step away for a little bit, make sure your mental health is okay. Um, your spot's not going anywhere. Uh, we need you. Um, but take care of yourself. Do things for yourself. Um, be valued by people, you know? And I want you to know I appreciate you as well. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do something special for all of you all right now. As of this moment, I'm doubling all of your salaries, okay? Your salaries are double, all right? Well, I thought I'd get an amen from somebody, okay? But your sal from the South Atlantic Conference office, your salaries are doubled, and uh, I hope you enjoy that increase, okay? Won't, won't you do it? Won't you do it? Can I get that in a gift card? Yeah. Listen, I'll do it in Cash App, all right? I'll do it. I will double what you already got in Cash App, yes. all right? So God bless you, and we really appreciate that. Now, we're about to get to business. We're about to get to business. Before we get to business, our adventure coordinator for the conference is on the line. Give us a snippet on what took place this weekend, Shelby, the miracle of what you guys did uh, together online. 
and then we'll jump right into our business. And I promise I won't hold you long. Go ahead, Shelby. Hey guys, how are you? Um, we had an awesome time with our adventure uh, family camp this weekend um, entitled God's My VIP. The children really, really enjoyed uh, the family camp. Um, what was so intriguing is that um, our children are so smart <laughs> and we cannot babysit them any longer. In youth ministry, we have to let them know exactly what time it is, the things that are really taking place and happening because they're eager to learn and they're ready. So we had a great time. Uh, I do see Dara on the line um, and he was there with his club in Columbia, but God is so good. I heard the pastor talking about things that we have been going through during this pandemic. And I can tell you guys, even though I have been working as the South Atlantic uh, coordinator, I've been going through a lot since this pandemic started. Actually, since January of this year, my mom has been in the hospital four times. And she was actually just hospitalized uh, last week. No, it was the week before, the Friday before last week, because I just got back from Virginia on Friday. And the week before I went to Virginia, she was hospitalized again for about uh, three to four days because she has heart problems. Uh, no COVID, it's just that she has a weak, very, very weak heart and she's been battling sickness. And this is the uh, first time in my life that I've seen my mom been in the hospital uh, back to back in a row. She's never been in the hospital, but her heart is getting weak. So I'm just asking that you to continue to pray for her. Uh, pray for me as your leader that God will continue to give me insight on things to do for this ministry. And just pray for us as a whole. Um, we need it right now. Uh, I'm still working, praise God. I have a job. Um, and But it's still stressful because you know what? I miss those hugs. I'm, I miss Sister Lockett hugging me, Pastor Donovan hugging me, Daryl saying what's up, Sean saying, hey, Sister Shelby, just different things like that. We're living in a different norm now. But one thing I can say, God is good. He's real. He's going to take care of us no matter what we go through. So do you all just keep working and anything that I can do for you from the Adventure Ministry, any ideas that you all have uh, that I can share in your AY programs, because we are a part of your team. Adventures and Pathfinders are a part of your federations. So anytime you need me to come down as an AY leader to introduce ministry in your churches or anything, virtually for right now, um, I'll be happy to do so, okay? May God bless you and thank you all for allowing me to join your meeting today. All right, and thank you for being here, Shelby. Wonderful weekend, job well done. I told the folk earlier, I've had a way forward meeting. This is our AY one. We've had one with Pathfinders. We're not having one with Adventurers. You're on top of it. You're the best, and uh, we appreciate all that you're doing. All right, now listen, uh, I want to pray a blessing over you all, and this is just from my heart to yours that God keeps you and continues to provide for you and take care of you during this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have blessed me with so many that I have the privilege to work with. And these individuals have served the church for many years and they love you. Sometimes they're underappreciated. Sometimes they don't get all that they need, but they stay in the ship. And for that, we say, thank you, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you give these few the desires of their heart. I pray that you keep them during these difficult times. Lord, I pray them, that you bless them in what they stand of need of. Give them extraordinary courage and tenacity. Give them creativity. Give them favor, God. May your blessing rest upon them. Forgive their sins. Give them a clean heart and renew a right spirit in them. And Lord, thank you for allowing them to be a part of this great ministry in the South Atlantic Conference. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. We've had a few more people join. Uh, if you could turn on your camera, I would appreciate it. Uh, we're recording this and we're streaming it on Facebook. And uh, you're not going to come up unless your camera's on. So we have several with their camera off. I would love for you to join. Some people just turned their head and said, oh, Lord, I'm online. Yes, you are. I'm sorry. You are. Richard Watkins, what's up, man? Welcome all the way from Augusta. 
There he is. All right. And so if you could do that for me, I would appreciate it. Let's begin with ministry and COVID-19. I want to give you, make sure you take notes on this. I'm going to give you some parameters from our conference office uh, to make sure you know how to proceed with your AY groups and with your federations, okay? Point number one, we cannot physically gather as groups until churches are open. What's going on, Danielle Best? in Goldsboro, North Carolina. All right, we can't physically gather until our churches open, okay? Um, resist the urge to pull your young people together physically now. There is no insurance protection for that. Everybody understand what we're saying? I know there's some people say, okay, we're taking the young people and we're going up into the mountain doing things like this. Until the church is open, the insurance that is extended to you from the conference does not move forward, okay? Because we're not supposed to be in our churches right now. The president has talked about maybe opening next month, uh, but we're asking you not to gather until the church is open. Now, until there is a vaccine, large gatherings are prohibited, okay? So even when church is open, it's not smart to get 100 kids together in the basement of your house. That's, that's just not smart. Um, even when the church is open, it's not smart to get 50 people uh, for a cookout on the church grounds. You know, it's just not smart. You should still avoid large gatherings. And if there's anybody on this line who ascribes to our president and thinks this is a hoax or a, a joke, or COVID-19 doesn't exist, people have died in the South Atlantic Conference from this. It's serious. It's heartbreaking. I've had to preside over four virtual funerals from young to old due to COVID-19, okay? It's heartbreaking. So let's not play around with this. Uh, number three, uh, when you do, the churches do, come together and you may have AY services, proper hand hygiene, mask, and social distancing must be practiced. I had the privilege of speaking at the Berean church not long ago. And at that church, uh, they broadcast from the church. It was my first time in the church in a long time. And people were so happy to be there. And they were so disappointed that I couldn't hug them like Shelby won't or shake their hands or uh, high five them, okay? Can't do it, even when you get together. As much as you miss people, you can't do that. You have to have proper hand hygiene, hand sanitizer, and the best thing is uh, soap and water, okay? You have to wear masks, and not masks below your nose, or not mask on your neck, covering your nose and mouth, okay? And you have to practice social distancing. You have to keep distance from one another. And then last but not least, once we are back together, parental consent must be a key component, okay? You're gonna have to talk to parents more than ever before. Okay, we're gonna have the AY on the mountain, or we're gonna have the AY in the park. Don't just put it out there without talking to parents, okay? We don't want any kids to feel pressured to do something that their parents are not ready for them to do, okay? So let's respect parents and make sure whatever we do, we're speaking to parents. All right, I just gave you four points. Any questions on those points? Any questions on that? It's pretty clear. We can't physically gather till church is open. We're not having large gatherings until there's a vaccine. We got a proper, practice proper safety measures. And once open, we need to talk to parents more than ever, okay? Please don't have secret meetings. All young people meet us here and people don't know where their kids are. Because guess what happens then? Somebody gets sick, they're not gonna sue your church, they're gonna sue South Atlantic Youth Ministries. Okay, because y'all said have AYS, all right? Any questions on COVID-19 and ministry? This is the time to ask, anybody. All right, everybody got that? 
All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And if, if I missed you, just unmute and talk, okay? If I missed you. Now, the next thing we got to talk about is social justice, all right? The world is on fire, okay? It's on fire. There's been an all-out attack on Black men by the systemic, uh, systemic racism that exists in our police departments. We will not have our head in the sand. Let me encourage everybody on this. Um, you don't have to get heavy into politics to speak on behalf of people that look like us, okay? And we have to have a voice concerning this. We have to. And you as an AY leader have a good opportunity to get your young people uh, involved. Not long ago, I, uh, let me see where I can find this. Not long ago, I sent this out uh, to you. Let me open this folder real quick. In your emails. Uh, let's find it. And it was 10 ways your youth group can protest. Okay. 10 ways. You should have that email for me. You can use this as a basis on some of the things your young people can do in your AY group to speak out. Uh, one of the things the president of our conference wanted me to make clear though, uh, if minors are involved in a protest, it has to be with parental accompaniment or parental uh, permission. Okay, parental accompaniment or parental permission. All right, so make sure you have that if you all go out and do something. But black kids and black AY leaders should be involved. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg just died. If y'all wanna write a letter campaign to your senator that the next president should uh, pick the next Supreme Court justice, that's something your AY group could do, okay? Now, there's something else I wanna show you. Um, not only did we send that forward, but we also sent out this, and this is from Beta. And you have this, if you don't have it, let me know. Uh, can every, give me a thumbs up if you can see this. Shelby, you can see this? Nobody can see it? Tasha, can you see it? You're talking about the Facebook page, yeah. Oh, the Facebook page. It's a Facebook page, you see? Yes, we see yes. a Facebook page. Okay, hold on, let's, let me fix this then. All right. So y'all didn't see the other thing. Okay. Mm -mm. Let's try this a little better. Everybody's looking at face. Can you see it now? Yes, the push okay. challenge. Okay. This is the push challenge from Beta. Okay. Um, we want you to get involved in this. You have this in your email as well. This is something, a practical action plan for that everyone can do. P stands for protest. Use your voice to agitate, advocate, and pray. U stands for understand your rights, teach and discuss voting, amendment rights, protest rights, police stop rights. S stands for show up, go to school board meetings, city council meetings, local elections, town halls, community events, and then H is hold them accountable, call, write, invite, connect with all local and elected leaders and law enforcement. You want to be involved. The biggest thing now is that you can, should be encouraging your young people of age to register to vote, okay? Register to vote. And we want to make sure that all of you are involved and all of you uh, register to vote. Now I'm gonna go back to that other screen where y'all just had me talking and uh, I didn't know it was just on my Facebook page. Uh, <laughs> and uh, let me close that out. No, that's not it. That's it. This is the, this is the flyer I was talking about 10 ways your youth group can protest. Can y'all see that now? No. Yes. Can, can you now see we it? just see your open folder. Okay. That's it. Your, um, I love technology. <laughs> okay. Thank you for telling me at least. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Okay. You have it in your email. I'm not going to go back to it. But y'all seen that flyer. And I want y'all to make sure you follow uh, that as well. Questions. Go ahead, Sean. You had a question. Yeah. I, I, um, the email that you're referring to, uh, I don't know. Maybe it was just me. But when I opened it up, I did not see the um, – I didn't see the poster, the um, the pictures, the flyers, I mean. And when I tried to get it on another website, I don't think I was looking at the right thing. So I okay. wonder if you could email those again. All right, I'm about to Maybe. put it in the uh, chat right now, okay? So when you go in the chat, you will be able to download this file, okay? Yes. And I'm going to do it right now. Let's see, desktop. All right, here is the 10 ways your youth group can protest. Uh, it's in the chat as we speak, okay? Um, and then let me give you the other one. The one you saw for push, it's in the chat as well, okay? Y'all see it come up? No. Let me look. No, I don't see anything in the chat yet. Yeah, okay. I see both of them in the chat. Okay. okay. So suggesting and push. They're in the chat, ready for download. Hmm. I guess it's coming. Uh, it's not okay. there yet. So check it out before we go, and we'll make sure that you have those things, okay? Um... Now, also, if you go out to protest, don't act like COVID is not out there, okay? Please don't, please wear masks. Please keep your space, okay? And let me say something else. We're still Christians too. We do not advocate burning stuff down, fighting, okay? This is not the time to take your gun with you, all right? No, we don't advocate any of that. We are, we believe in peaceful, what did I say? Peaceful protest, okay? And we want all of you all to be involved in that. What do you have to say about social justice, everybody? Anybody have any comments mm. on what we just talked about? Mm. Bert Jackson, if you can mute your phone, I would appreciate it. Anybody have any comments about what we just talked about? Any disagreements? Y'all think we should be involved in this? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to speak out. People say, ah, Christians don't do it. Well, I guess God made a mistake in empowering Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Or inspiring Esther to say, for such a time as this, I have to speak out. Or, or for Hananiah, Azariah, and Michelle. And by the way, stop teaching our kids the slave names of Hananiah, Azariah, and Michelle. We teach them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was their slave names. Let them know their real names. Come on, somebody talk to me. All right. right. And, and they stood up for what was right. They said, we're not going to bow down. All right. We have a rich history of protests. Even Jesus himself was a melanated young man oppressed by a European government power. Somebody talk to me. What, Jesus was melanated? How else could he hide in Egypt? Somebody's with me. Tasha, you felt that one. Yes, you did. <laughs> so, so, let's make sure we get involved and uh, do those things. Any comments before we move on? Okay. Yes, um, Simone. Yes, Simone. So, um, here at your church, we are right across the street from North Carolina A&T. Yes, you are. Those students are dynamic. They will protest. Oh, they so it was really, it's been really good these past Hold on for just a minute. Sister Pettis, if you can mute, mute no, I'll mute her. You're, uh, you're coming through. Just mute your phone, Sister Pettis. Okay, go ahead, Simone. So it's been great because we basically just have to stay tuned to the university and the students who came to church every Sabbath would tell us, hey, we're doing this, or some of the professors who were there would get wind of what the students were doing, and it was always great to participate. The challenge we have this semester is the few students who are on campus, they're not going to do anything like that. So 
I already have the ideas that you sent in the flyer and what we've, what I've heard from the meetings over the summer. But if anyone has done any of those social justice outreach things with, um, you know, with teenagers, young adults, please feel free to like put it in the chat or say it or email it through to the group because when you're so used to having the social justice and the protesting and so on just kind of move on its own just from the fact that we're right next to that university it's been very jarring to have this sudden change where now we as the youth department have to think of you know what we're what we're going to do so yeah and enjoy that um heartbreakingly east market street won't always be on east market street and um you know the move is impending uh, soon. Um, but while you're there, enjoy that status near that great, the largest HBCU in the nation, uh, North Carolina A&T. And so we want um, y'all to take advantage of that. We should be involved in this, guys. We should be involved. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. All right. Uh, we're Christians. We, we follow Jesus. But guess what? We have to speak against evil. And this is the evil of this time. And make sure your young people are registering to vote. All right, let's move forward, everybody. Let's talk about things that are working and not working with your AY program, okay? Now, or your youth ministry program. AY can't die on our watch. Come on, say it, man. It can't, okay? Uh, it used to be MV, and then switched to AYS, and now it's AYM, but it can't die on our watch. There's great value in AY. Uh, I believe AY introduced me to Jesus. I remember every one of my AY leaders, and I can't tell you all of my college professors. College. But I remember all my AY leaders. They've made a difference in my life. And AY makes a difference in young people's life, and it cannot die. Um, when we talk about the AY program, let me give you a few things, and I want your feedback on this, that you can do to keep AY alive in your district. Number one, the first thing we need to do during this pandemic is stay in touch. Even if there's not a program taking place right now, it takes nothing to call your young people. Send them a text. How you doing? Are you right? It really makes a difference now. You'd be surprised how many young people are lonely. AY used to be a place they escaped the hell of their home. All right. And now they're stuck in that place. The people are telling them what they're not, fussing at them, beating on them. To hear from their youth leader would make a big difference in their life. I can't call all the young people in conference, but every now and then I try to call some of them. And they really appreciate it. Man, thanks for thinking about me. Hey, how's school going? Uh, you'll find out there's a lot of struggles going on, okay? I've had to reach in my pocket and buy kids laptops. I'm failing school because my laptop don't work right, you know? Or we can't afford one. It's a chance to minister right there. All you have to do is stay in touch. Kids care about you caring about them more than a program. More than a program. And if you reach out to these young people, Hey, how you doing? If you do that consistently, it keeps your youth group alive. Even better, tell them to reach out to one another. Okay? Start email chains or text chains. Start small, start small groups. Okay? And, and here's something powerful. Ask about their friends. Any of your friends going through anything? We have stopped suicides for asking about friends. I thought nobody cared about me until your pastor or your AY leader called me. It makes a difference in kids' life during this quarantine, okay? So number one, stay in touch with the young people of the church. Now, here's what's non-negotiable. Number two, non-negotiable. If you are an AY leader, if you're a youth director at your church, all right, if you're leading youth ministries, you need to have some type of online platform. Okay, got to have Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meets, 
something where people can gather. Don't feel bad if you've not done that yet, okay? But I've, I'm looking on the screen. I've joined most of your youth groups on your online thing. I've been with East Market Street. I've been with Decatur. Uh, I've been with the other churches on here on your youth platform. This past Sabbath, I was with Charlotte Northeast. Sabbath before that, I was with uh, Columbia and Charleston as they did a joint AY, okay? You need an online platform. Now, hear me closely. If you don't have it or you don't understand it, Shelby will tell you, you can use mine. Tell me when you need it. I'll even set it up for you, okay? I'll give you a little tutorial, but you can use mine. You have to use this function. Young people love it. Charlotte Northeast AY uh, last night was phenomenal, phenomenal, okay? And I've been with Sumter and Berean, a lot of places, okay? You want to make sure you have an online platform. If you don't have one, one will be provided for you. That's not non that's non-negotiable. Okay. All right. I am I'm currently paying for about seven online platforms. All right. For some people. And you can have that as well. All right. I'm gonna read that out loud in a minute, Shelby. Um Number number three, focus on quality over quantity, all right? He, hear me, AY leaders. These are tough times. Uh, doing an AY program every week may get you overwhelmed. But if you do two good ones a month, especially during the pandemic, it'll take you far, okay? Please don't stress yourself out, all right? Give me two good ones that you actually plan, that you don't do off the top of your head. You know what I mean? That you don't get online and say, hey, what are we going to do today? No, no. Come up with an idea. Um, Natasha is still on. Natasha, tell them about Hollywood Squares. Well, um, you know, we had some glitches here and there, but uh, the concept was the, the game show Hollywood Squares using Zoom. And um, what I discovered along the way, um, you can pin people in place. Zoom allows you to see up to 49 people on the screen at one time. So, um, you know, the, the concept where there are nine squares, it's a, a, a tic-tac-toe game, basically. And so um, we figured out how to pin the contestants and the celebrities on the square along with the host. And we played the game. Um, there were some other things that I kind of didn't get to, you know, different little production matters like buzzers for being correct. And, you know, my theme music, I forgot to play, but there were a lot of other things going on as well. But it was a whole lot of fun. I try to, you know, think outside the box most of the time with my um, programs. And I wanted to do something where we could talk about some of the serious things that are going on in um, the world around us right now without it being such a drag. Like I, you know, I'm an emotional person. I will bust out crying on you. And, you know, and I'm thinking about social justice matters and the pandemic and all of these different things that are facing young people right now and really just did not want the program to be a drag, even though the subject matter was quite heavy. So that was it. It was All right. fun. All right. Richard Watkins, where you at, man? Richard, talk about the last few AY programs you had and, and, and this idea you sent in the chat. Come on, Richard, turn on your camera, tell everybody about what happened in Augusta. All right. Um, so I, I know in Augusta, what we've been doing to kind of relieve the stress of having to plan a program every week, uh, a lot of the youth like to actually lead out. So we give them that opportunity to take a week and plan a youth program. And if they need help, we're there for them. But uh, we let them do what they want to do with the program and from song service to Vespers. And they plan everything and, and it, it's it, it's gone pretty well. We've done that for almost the entire uh, duration of the uh, quarantine. Um, and then, you know, also I do, uh, I've created uh, Family Feud and um, Jeopardy 
PowerPoint templates that are just like the actual games, but um, you know, you're able to adjust everything and you know, share your screen and um, people can uh, choose their answers and everything. And it's really, uh, really easy to set up. So there's a lot of things that we can do to uh, engage the youth. Very good, Richard. So you're seeing this quality coming out. There have been some exceptional things across the conference that are taking place that are inclusive, that are creative, and the young people love. Charlotte Northeast had 70 young people at AY this past weekend. 70, you know? I mean, it's, it, we, we're having a dynamic reach. All you have to do is do it and put the word out. And young people love gathering on our, and guess what? When it's quality, they bring their friends. So it's a form of evangelism as well, okay? And it goes a long way. Don't worry about quantity. Don't worry about quantity. Worry about quality. Make it nice, okay? And it goes a long way and is blessed. Akua, are you still on? Talk about what you're doing this weekend. What you did this weekend, Akua. Um, hi, everybody. So this weekend, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of the game. So for our theme this year, we started off with hashtag choices. And our theme was to teach the kids how to make better choices using um, Bible characters and the choices that they made in, in the Bible. But of course, that got flipped, turned upside down because we haven't really been able to do it. So me and my team have been coming up with ways to to come back to our theme and um because we have been doing like one um young lady said trying to take trying to address situations but but um be light with it and so what we did was we got back to our theme and i don't know if anybody has heard of the game black card revolt um and it's a card game but you can play it i played it on zoom before so what we did was we did teen card revolt and we had different scenarios um, and um, different scenarios about what teens go through and how they um, deal with those scenarios. Like, um, for instance, I think we did like one on bullying. And the question was, we gave three or four different answers on how they could, um, what choice they would make in those situations. And so they held up their cards, A, B, C, or D, and then we discussed why they chose those answers. It was really enlightening, um, yeah. actually, um, because some of their reasonings were, as an adult, I would think that that was the wrong answer. I really got a feeling from them about why they make the choices they make. And um, so we had a discussion on that. So that was pretty good, but every, Third Sabbath is our youth Sabbath. And so we're going to be focused on choices on that Sabbath. And then we do another program. We only do pro two programs a month because it is a little bit overwhelming, like you said. So that's what we're doing um, until we get back together. Sister Smith, talk about what's happening in Greensboro. All right, so beginning back in March, we were so ambitious. We we're like, normally in person, we have AY every week. So we're gonna have AY every week. Okay, so we started off with a week of prayer back in um, early, the first week of April. And from then on, yes, that was the plan every week. But that was, I, I don't know if the young people were just adjusting to, having to do virtual classes. I don't know what it was, or maybe they were like, we're free. I, I have no idea what it was, but the attendance was just so low that of course you have to go back to the drawing board. And the drawing board was kind of simple. It was basically every other week, you know, and, and that actually helped a lot, not just with ideas, but also um, allowing the families to, not have not have to say okay every sabbath we're doing this for you. but there are some sabbaths where they have free they'll, they'll share their pictures of them at, as a family at a, a a a waterfall or so they've been um i i'm happy that we decided to not 
take each of their Sabbaths, but now they have a Sabbath off every other week to just enjoy themselves as a family. And, now. Uh, yeah, so we, we have done some social justice material and we're, we actually have one coming up this Sabbath from someone who works in the juvenile justice system talking about helping our young people to know their rights and know their Christian responsibilities in, in interactions with law enforcement. So it, the, sum, the six months feel like a blur, but thankfully I can pinpoint times when I realized that we connected with young people. So um, I really, I have to say we weren't focused, we were focused on them. I did not think about focusing on their friends you know, like to say, so what are your friends going through? We really have been, we, we kind of divided to conquer. So I would say, could you ask, could you get it this week, this well, person? One week. of your AYs though, I remember distinctly somebody invited their friend. Yes, oh yes. I remember that. So and uh, even last week, we had a friend who showed up yeah. for our little right. trivia. Game. So yes, you know, God has a way of working that out, even when we as fallible humans don't think of it. So I praise God for that. But um, yeah, we, I'll definitely make sure that we're doing that more. And yeah, we're just looking forward to finishing out the year strong and okay. just going, like you said, every other, every other week is what we're, is what we're planning. Right. So we all have our part to do in keeping AY alive. To reiterate this section, stay in contact with your young people. Make sure you have a gathering platform. If you don't have one, we'll provide one for you and show you how to use it, all right? And then also focus on quality over quantity and be consistent, be consistent. If you are consistent, people will begin to look forward to it. Sometimes low attendance, is because people don't know if it's going to happen or not. Okay? Be consistent. Um, all of you, you've seen my flyers. If you want a flyer made, all you have to do is ask. Just ask. Say, Pastor, I need a flyer. Give me the information. We'll get you a flyer. You know? Um, free of charge. It, it costs you nothing. Okay? But if you want a flyer to put out, that'll help you in promoting it. We have your back. We'll make sure that you have what you need to be successful in your AY uh, program. Okay, um, let's go to best practices. We're almost done, we're almost done. We're gonna do best practices. We're gonna talk about federations. Uh, uh, I have someone on who's gonna share an idea about sports and then we're done. Um, these are some of the best things I've seen happen in AY across the nation. And if you have some ideas, we'd like to hear from you as well. The best thing I've seen yet when it comes to AY is collaboration, okay? Collaboration. Stop thinking you're limited to your city. Talk to me, Natasha Jones. When you partner with another church, it goes a long way to make a dope AY, okay? If a partner with another city, watch this. Inviting a first day youth group to be a part of your AY program, collaboration. We have to expand our minds beyond the borders of our church. Y'all hear me today? Okay. You don't got to give gas money. You don't have to get honorariums. Nobody has to travel. All people need to have is a link, a link. And you're partnering with new people. Now you can start small. You could say, we're going to have my pastor lead AY, or we're going to have the Pathfinders lead AY, or the Adventurers lead AY, the Ushers lead AY, Community Service lead AY. You can collaborate with different departments in your church, or you can take it further. I'm going to collaborate with different churches. Now, the, the amazing thing about the Charlotte Northeast AY that I went to last night, it was Charlotte Northeast and Flatbush, New York, partnering together for AY program. You had kids from Gastonia, Charlotte, and Brooklyn, and New York, all on one line, and it wasn't their first time doing this. 
you know? You can literally partner with any church you want in the country to do an AY program, okay? So collaboration is where it's at. You can ask anybody. You can collaborate. Richard Watkins collaborated with me in my department. And he said, Pastor, come in and do an AY for us. You know I'll do that for you. All right? If you want me to come in and do an AY, we'll do it for you. His AY was on, uh, what does the Bible say about slavery? And we talked a long time about that, okay? And so collaboration is where it's at, okay? Collaboration, that is the best practice. You can, you can call Sister Lockett and say, we want the master gods to do AY for us, all right? You know, you call Oakwood. We, we need the Aeolians at our AY. Can y'all set that up? You know, I'll pass the bird. Pass the bird, do an AY for us. This stuff is, and listen, y'all tell me anybody who tried to charge y'all, okay? Anybody looking for money to do this? No, no. It's about clicking a link <laughs> and showing up, all right? And so make sure you collaborate. All the people in this line, all y'all should contact each other and do AYs for each other and bring your young people together. Quit staying in a little box by your, I got low attendance. You got low attendance because you're not reaching out to nobody. You know, reach out to another church and have an amazing AY service, okay? All right, so you can reach out to, like I said, youth department. The biggest thing we neglect is reaching out to the community. During COVID-19, you can find creative ways to put the word out that young people can join your ministry. Put a little sign in your churchyard. Every so-and-so, this is where you can find us online. Okay? Online. Put it in the beginning of your uh, neighborhood. This is where your young people can find something to do online. Okay? Toyin, go ahead, brother. They on their last night. Hey, Pastor. Um, you said a very, very valid point, and I would like to know um, if you can make it possible, you can share, maybe um, probably via email, all of the contacts in today's meeting. Because I'm loving that collab idea. Yes. Um, our, attendance is, our attendance is struggling, you know, and we're trying to grow, and now that'd be, that would be perfect. You got it, brother. You got it. Um, and thank you for being on, Brother Ole. You get some exercise, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm outside walking. Okay, all right. Trying to get a little bit. All right, well, thank you for being down. I mean, check it out, y'all. Check it out. Check it out. You have unlimited AYs. Unlimited if you yeah, begin collaborating. Like okay? It goes on. And this doesn't just mean AY groups. Adventure clubs, Pathfinder clubs, okay? Um, it's a good chance for your young people to meet other people. Okay, so collaboration goes a long way. Now, some some people told me, Pastor, we have no young people at our church, but you have young people in your community. Okay, and parents in that community are looking for something for their young people to do. Market to your community. Like I said, put little signs out. All right, pass out flyers. You ain't gotta. You can still social distance and do that. You ain't gotta knock on their door. Put it in their door. Here's three things your young people can participate in at our church during the pandemic. Give them the link. Give them the Zoom link. And you'll see people you never met before showing up because you're serving your community. Okay? You're serving your community. I keep myself All right. So that's, that's one best practice. The second best practice I've seen is young people involved in community service and service projects. Okay? You can partner with your local community service and do something for the community with your youth group. Peggy, if you can talk about the feeding program in Fayetteville and what happens and young people getting involved in that. Can you talk about that? I keep trying to remember how to unmute, sorry. Um, we uh, in Fayetteville, North Carolina right now, and I know the other states are doing it as well because a young lady contacted me from South Carolina. Um, I, I found her information and what the government is doing, they're doing a grant. That grant will, uh, 
it'll give you money. The government will give you money. You find a restaurant in your area that would actually do meals for the children, um, especially since a lot of them are doing virtual. And so we chose KNW. KNW restaurant did our meals. We had a lady that oh, picked, the meal, picked the meals up. And as they got the meals, they dropped them off to different sites. We have a, um, a sign at our church. And Curtis put the sign out and said, free meals. And so what we did, we also did crafts and we did a drive through uh, VBS. And we had people that came through and they picked up their meals, they picked up their uh, VBS items, and we ran that program for two weeks. When it ended, we still did the lunches. And like we would cut off at a certain time, and there was a new neighborhood up the street from us. We met so many children that were at home by themselves because their parents were working. And so for the next three weeks after that, we fed those kids. Um, and from that, matter of fact, we have now, uh, I think we added about 25 people watching our church for service online, um, just because of us going out you know, into the community and doing that. Uh, there are a lot of programs. And then besides that, we also do a program uh, we partner with Second Harvest Food Bank, and we feed our community that way as well. Um, we just did that this past Tuesday. We did 160 families that we were able to give food to, and there was no cost to us because the government provides the food. So there are a lot of programs in our areas that will give you the food, give you the resources. All you need is just to help to get it done. All right. So they're hungry minority kids in your communities because they can't go to school. We can be salt and light for these kids. We can make a difference for them, okay? And so you can partner with your local church or your community uh, people. Peggy, put your contact information in the chat so people can reach out to you and bless young people in your community. Now, when this is over, we don't need to hear any more Ah, we don't have young people in your church. All right, go to Walmart, buy you those little hood cookies, you know, the little butter cookies, get you a thing of Kool-Aid and some popcorn, and every Saturday night you have a Christian movie night at your church, and go around in the community, get the Pathfinders to beat the drums, and say it's movie night at the church, and you'll have hundreds of kids at your church. Did you say hood cookies? Come on, I grew up on them. All right, y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, <laughs> the almond cookies, you know what I'm saying? They got a little hole in the middle of them. All right, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> don't, and don't, listen, and don't tell them you got a fruit punch or anything. Tell them you got red and orange <laughs> and grape, okay? That appeals to something in our people, okay? That's what they serve in Wakanda, all right? And so all I'm saying to you all, we can make a difference if we stop being so scared of the people in our community, particularly around the church. It makes, it costs nothing. Little popcorn, people will send their babies right to you, their young people right to you, and it makes a difference. Well, during quarantine, if you put out what you're doing, people will actually come. All right, we've talked about the AY program. We've talked about best practices. Any comments or any other best practices? Anything you've seen working for AY around the country? The floor is open. And then we're going to begin wrapping up, everybody. Can I say on um, what happened, what worked for us? Go ahead, man. I know um, it was so hard for us to get dialogue on Go ahead, Zoom. Go ahead. Tell them where you at. Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, the great, the great Atlanta, Georgia. Your church, bro. <laughs> Hope, oh, oh, my bad. <laughs> Hope Tabernacle. Hope Snellville. Tabernacle, all the way up in Snellville, but I, I still represent Atlanta, right? But um, we have our issues with getting the kids to give us dialogue, so talk to us, talk to us, right? But as soon as we say, put it in the chat. Whew, it's like we almost have to shut down the chat. So yesterday we had three games that were strictly geared towards just the chat room. Um, we did like um, name that phrase. We put up three pictures, three random pictures, and your job is to look at the three pictures and figure out the phrase. 
Jesus wept. There was a picture of, a, of an emoji crying and the cross right beside it. And it, drop it in the chat. Jesus wept. So the chat blew up. And um, as a best practice, we, we realized what we're going to try and do is like maybe do like 80% chat and hopefully 20% dialogue. So um, that was something that we are, were developing and trying to improve as, our, as one of our best practices. Awesome, awesome. Now, right now, people are putting their information in the chat. You want to collaborate? You want to write down everybody's information? Put your name in the chat, everybody. Copy all this stuff down. Put your information in the chat. Working together can be our power, man. If you, and this isn't even a fraction of our people. All right? We got to get out this mindset that we're isolated by our churches. We're connected by the internet now, okay? You can do anything with anybody at any time, all right? Every Sabbath, I'm at least in six different churches. That's no travel budget. That's no Hampton Inn. You know what I mean? Uh, and this is going to continue once we start traveling again, all right? We can do more working together. We can do more working together. Any other best practices, any ideas, Anything that's working for you that you'd like to share with the team? Um, one um, thing that we used, um, and this was prior to us going into quarantine, and um, it can certainly be used now to um, go along with um, what the gentleman was just sharing about using the chat. Um, back channel chat, it's a, um, kind of an open forum where you can create an avatar and uh, I use it in my classroom, you know, because sometimes when kids are allowed to speak anonymously, they'll be a little bit more honest. So I um, also began using it in AY to allow people to have live input with what was going on. So, you know, you can conduct your program, but you still have a live feed for people who want to comment or give suggestions and, you know, that kind of cuts down on passing the microphone and, you know, like we would do in church and letting everybody have their say, because sometimes people take a little bit too long. So back channel chat is one. And, it, you know, they have an option where you can um, purchase a, an account, but I use it for free. So back um, that's, that's what I was getting ready to ask. Um, does anybody have any free resources? Because a lot of the stuff that I'm kind of looking for or interactive things always cost um, money to get the true effect. So even if we could just formulate a list of free resources that people use, that might be helpful. That'd be great. That'd be great. And if you're ever in a bind in buying something, don't spend your money. Contact my office. Okay? Don't spend your money. Contact my office. Now, will I always be able to say yes? No. But <laughs> about 65% of the time, I'll be able to say yes, <laughs> okay? So contact my office first, see if I can help you out, or at least pay for part of it, okay? If you wanna get something, contact me first, all right? Um, we will make a master list of our AY departments, and then we'll make a master list of resources as well. I want to help you get your stuff out. Is there anybody on this call who currently is not receiving the youth department emails. All right, that's good then. We're making progress, that's good. What we wanna start doing, I need y'all to send me your events. And then weekly, we can have a list of 40, 50, 60 options for young people every weekend. I want young people from everyone starting to show up to your stuff. Realize you're not just doing it for your people. You're going to be doing it for anybody, okay? And wouldn't it be a blessing for a young person to pull, open an email and say, man, what AY I'm going to go to this weekend, okay? And there's 30, 40 choices for them to go to every weekend, all right? So start sending me what you're doing so we can put it out to everybody. A good thing for you to do, AY leaders, is to watch other programs and see how you can improve, how you can make it better, okay? There are a lot of great things going on, and we want you to be a part of it. Anything else in best practices and ideas? The floor is open. Anybody else? Go ahead, Sister Smith. Is your hand up? Yes. Go ahead. So last, last week, what we did also is, um, you know, just in order for um, – 
the young people to trickle in as they usually do, right? So um, I just shared, instead of sharing a regular screen, you can just share a whiteboard. So I shared the whiteboard and told them just write, just write what you're, write or type whatever is on your mind. And it was very, it was very eye-opening, you know, um, just to see what, we, we know what we think is on young people's minds, but you never know what uh, a young person is going through at that moment and is willing to share. So for about five minutes, they just scribbled everything. Somebody wrote, they were hungry. Somebody else was um, writing things about love and so on. So it just gave them a moment to not, not have to come up with a response. They were just relaxing and just writing whatever they were comfortable writing. And I think I asked them about it later and they said, yeah, I like that. It was, it was good. So, but that's just sharing your, instead of sharing a screen on your computer, you just share your white, the whiteboard screen. Excellent. All right, anybody else? Okay, let's begin to wind down then. Let's begin to wind down. Let's talk federations. And I need all my federation presidents at attention, Edwin, Peggy, Sean, Quinesha. Um, let's, let's make sure we um, are paying attention here. And this is from the conference and my office and the president's office. We can't have any in-person federations this year. Do I have to explain why? Everybody understands that, right? Okay, we, we can't have any in-person federations. We can't be calling all the young people to come to the campground during COVID. You know, we can't rent a big old church and have 1,400 people there. Um, we can't do it. What you do for federation in the fall is up to you, okay? Now, we also, are not having elections this year. This is the election. And we're also not having federation elections. If you don't want to be president no more or serve on a federation, I just need you to let me know. And we're going to go through a process, a democratic process of replacing those individuals. But even in your local church, and I don't know if you know this, uh, the conference president has put out that they're not having local church elections. Okay. So if you thought, oh, I'm almost free. No, you got to, <laughs> you're still on board, okay? You're still on board. You're still in the ship. But there are no, so if, you, if you're in Federation, be prepared to do it next year as well, okay? I may not be your youth director. Uh, my term ends September next year, okay? But you could still be in place. All right, so let's make sure that you understand that we're not having in-person federation. If you pay for a building or put some money down for a caterer or something like that, your head has been in the sand, number one. And number two, we can't take that risk. We can't, okay? Any questions on that? All right, not even a mini federation at your church. All right, you want to do a federation online, have fun, okay? But not even a mini one at your church. The liability is just too high to risk, okay? Now let's hear from each federation president and hear where you are when it comes to planning. The Haitian Federation's already done amazing events thus far, okay? So let's start with you, Edwin. Tell us what you've done and let's talk about your plans for the fall. So we um, already did some few things on the Zoom and YouTube and Facebook Live. We did um, a program where we wanted to, in the beginning, we wanted to kind of give homage to our graduates, our, you know, our um, medical uh, personnel and essential workers. We did that. That was pretty good. We also did one on um, injustice um, and uh, social injustice. and equality and so we talked about all of that um that was in june we had one in may one in june and then um, we had the federation day in all uh, 
like three weeks ago, <laughs> sorry, my t- my days are really bad right now, but um, we had one three weeks ago that was um, live as well. And it, this was our planning out how we planned it is that every segment or if we were working on praise team, we focus, focus only on praise team. If we um, needed speakers, we had put them in a different date, make sure everybody had masks, people, hands were washed, make sure there was sparing, no more than 10 people in the room um, while taping. Um, so it went out pretty well. Um, it was amazing, actually. And actually, we're coming up with um, starting hopefully this tomorrow, we're coming up with something called Motivational Monday, where we're going to take a, a youth from different churches to every Monday broadcast a little motivation, a little spiritual word to the young people. So we're going to start doing that. Hopefully it's not this Monday, next Monday, where we'll literally go and pick out the young people to speak to their own and so um we're coming up like i said we got more young people actually involved and coming up with new ideas of how they would like things to look so that's great we have our website up um like i said facebook instagram is moving so it's just a blessing and planning wise my team i don't really do much of the planning i'm just there to facilitate and make sure everything is good like my people are killing it they're doing the planning and I just finalize to make sure everything looks well before it goes out. So blessings to that. All right. Hopefully partner, I answer your question. Partner, partner, partner with Please. The Haitian Federation. Okay. I would love to reach out to you guys. We have a oh, um, we have a program happening October third. We have a young man who wants to Amisha Dai. A lot of you guys should know him. Um, he is uh going to do a free um public speaking seminar. I and mean, that's in a webinar um, in October 3rd. Uh, so we will definitely send that to you guys as well. I have all your emails. I screenshot everybody's information. I'll send that to you. It's free. It's that one day he wants, he wants to motivate young people, especially young men and women to learn how to speak in the public and also learn how to preach. So he wants to, to sponsor that and help out Sakaf with that. So I'm definitely going to send out that information ASAP. Actually, we're just finalizing the flyer today as we're speaking. So. If you want to know anything about SACAF, at our last Tri-State Federation in Atlanta, they were over the music. And they showed up, all right? They showed up. So there's a great group to partner with, and you want to partner with them, a lot of energy. And uh, get your youth directors on board, Edwin, um, you know, partnering with other churches. Uh, for AY and different programs, but good job on that. Uh, let's go to South Carolina. What's new in South Carolina, Sean? What are your plans for the fall? Um, right now, we're still in our planning process. Um, the biggest part is, well, two of the biggest things that we're doing is, once again, we are wanting to collab with our AY directors um, so that their events can lead up to an eventual bigger event. We're planning to have that uh, event in Federation event in November. Um, not sure on the date just yet. We're still waiting on people to um, kind of decide, okay, we want to do it on this date or that date. Uh, November 7th is one date that we are looking at. Uh, also, um, some out the box ideas. Um, we're trying to get away from the traditional um, service. Uh, that's what we talked about at our last meeting, which is really good. Um, we're hoping and asking our AY directors to go back to their young people and have discussions with them and whatever they say about how they would like, what, what they would like to see, what some of the things they would like to do for this federation. Since it's gonna be virtual, um, they'll bring what they say back to the next meeting that we have. So um, we're definitely uh, looking forward to seeing what the fall brings. All right, and to answer your question, Brother Keith, no, not why the churches are clo- closed. Um, thank you, South Carolina. I see Keisha o- Austin on here. Uh, Keisha, you want to say anything about what's going on in South Carolina? Uh, we thank you for being on the call. You want to talk about anything that's going on in South Carolina? Just to hear your um, voice and thank you for being on. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey. Um, here in Charleston, I know we've been busy through all out the entire COVID. Um, Charleston has been feeding the community since March. 
um, passing out goods as well as serving hot meals. So kind of gave out 400 meals yesterday. Didn't you? I was on the prayer call this morning and they said 400 meals yesterday. Yeah. So it, it's been about 400 people every other week since March that we've been feeding. Wow. Um, we're currently paused and just passing out um, goods, not the hot meals, but trying to get back with our youth, get them every, everyone together on the call and uh, partnering with game nights and trying to get this federation up and running and keep the momentum high. Thank you, Keisha. Um, one of the most talented young ladies I know, and I know you're doing a lot and leading in that area. And uh, Shiloh's on the moon, and we thank God for you. All right, let's talk about North Carolina. Um, and for those who don't know, this is my aunt. This is my daddy's youngest sister, Peggy Roy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I shouldn't tell nobody that. But tell us what's going on in North uh, North Carolina Federation. You got to turn your, uh, unmute. Your plans for the fall. Uh, we really have not gotten together to meet for our planning for the fall. Um, what we're really doing right now is trying to still get in touch with some of our AY leaders with our churches, uh, because it was suggested that we really need everyone's input. And so we don't want to do it with just a couple of, um, AY leaders. Simone is good and I'll be calling you. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you for that. And now we'll wrap up with our Georgia Federation leader, Quenisha Hicks. Let's talk about what's taking place in the fall. Now, she said it earlier, they've already started a great Friday night program. They go every other Friday night where they bring in the speaker. You can participate in that. Uh, I think we've sent that flyer out to everybody. If not, you can get it off ES Portis Youth Federation's Facebook page. Uh, but go ahead, Quenisha. The floor is open. Patrick, let you say a few words after that, too, about Federation. Okay. Hi, everyone. Again, like Pastor Washington said, um, Georgia has started their own virtual series called Entitled God and Proud of Fighting. Um, what we've kind of sort of been doing with that, we tried to not only have speakers that our young people would be interested in listening to, but also speakers that would minister to um, our church body at large. Um, this week we have um, a dynamic speaker by the name of Ray Gray, who will be asking the question of what are, we will, what are you really fighting for uh, will be his message or his topic for this week. It's not going to be your traditional sermon type of information. It's going to be more of a panel discussion where he will have a live panel with him that he will be discussing questions with, as well as those who are tuned in will be able to chat their questions. They, their questions will go straight to Ray, and Ray will respond to those questions as he sees fit. Um, so that's for this Friday night at 7.30. All of the information is on my Facebook page, um, the ES Porter's Facebook page, as well as our website. Um, and kind of sort of what we're doing leading up, this is this virtual series that we're doing is actually going to lead up to our Federation weekend. Um, and then what we're going to do is the week of our Federation, we're actually going to do a week of prayer where we will also have different speakers every night for that. Um, we are bringing some speakers that we have not heard from in a while. Um, we're bringing them back to South Atlantic and reintroducing them to South Atlantic. So we're very excited about that. Um, and I believe this series will possibly go um, far beyond our Federation weekend. So I'm just excited about what God is doing through our virtual series right now. Awesome. 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 Kanisha, I know you're, the, you're doing great things and we thank God for you. Really do. Patrick, you want to add anything? Uh, um, hello, everybody. I'm Patrick West. I'm the treasurer for the East Georgia Youth Federation. Uh, um, Quenisha Hicks pretty much summed it up for us. Uh, we are having um, Friday night virtural sessions every other Friday night. Uh, it's posted on our website. If you don't know, our website is georgiayouthfederation.org. We have a couple of other websites, uh, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and a YouTube page as well. Um, you know, we're willing to co collaborate with everybody and be a resource for you guys and hope that um, we can lean on you guys for some ideas as we all um, 
are working towards the same goal. That's about it for us. Thank you, Donovan and uh, Pastor Washington, for uh, having this platform uh, for us so that we can all uh, connect in some capacity. Nah, thank you, man. Thank you for being a part of this, and thank you for keeping the money right in Georgia. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, folks, we are uh, winding down. If you are an AY leader, your first ministry contact in your state is your federation president, okay? Stay in touch with your federation president, okay? Uh, Georgia, that's Quenisha Hicks. South Carolina, that's Sean Pascal. Haitian Federation, that's Edwin Estime. And North Carolina, that's Peggy Roy, okay? And all their information is in the chats. All their information is in the chats. Um, if you want Master Guide presence at your events or would like to learn more about Master Guide, the highest level of youth ministry, you contact Ernestine Lockett, who is also a part of Georgia Federation. Uh, we can't... Now, is Jerron, are you on the phone? I saw him earlier and he looks out it looks like he stepped away. We're going to be introducing a new sport once we open back up, and that's flag football for the churches. And we are actually partnering with the NFL. And Jerron was on to talk about that, but he stepped away. I'll be giving you some more information on that soon. Uh, we can't do much as a finger. A finger can be broken. A finger's not that powerful by itself. But if we work as a fist and work together or work as a body, we can get a lot done. A lot of great things are happening in this conference. And it's not because of the youth director. It's because of you. Uh, people may not pat you on the back or appreciate all that you're doing, but you make youth ministry breathe in our conference. Uh, you make it alive. Um, uh, Tyler, uh, you are the infinity gum. Okay? <laughs> you power it. You all give it power. I want to tell you thank you. Um, the joy of my life has been working with you guys. It really has been. I mean, it's been a real privilege. And it's like, the, the beauty of it is I'm looking at all these faces. You all aren't strangers to me. You know, you're people I know, and we've spent time together. Uh, the devil hates you. The devil hates you. And the things that are happening in your life is him trying to discourage you to get you off of this. Keep humbling yourself before God's mighty hand. and He'll lift you up. And God knows your name. And he's walking with you. I appreciate everything you're doing. And we can take it to a higher level if we work together. If we work together. If we stay in touch. If we keep communicating. I am here to make your ministry flourish. Anything I can do for you. And if it's as simple as showing up. Y'all know me. I will not give you red tape. Okay. If I, if I got the time, I'll be there. You know. So just let me know how I can help you, how I can support you. And don't give up in this fight. There's a young person right now where your ministry is literally keeping them alive. Them looking forward to seeing you is what's giving them purpose and power. And I need y'all to hold on and, and don't give up. Is there anything miscellaneous that we need to bring to the table before we close? All I, all I wanted to mention is if you guys have any um, Instagram or face, Facebook, please put it on a link. I got three already and I already started following because that actually helps me a whole lot so I can just be able to repost on my page and make sure I put it on my Facebooks and stuff so that I can be able to make sure that your programs as well, my kids are attending. So please, if you guys can do that, I got three. So if you guys have any Instagram or Facebook, That'll be amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and and everybody should be getting on social media. Or, or can we get past this time where social media is e evil or or too hard? If you want to connect, young people ain't gonna email you. They're not gonna call you either. 
they are offended if they it, it, they are offended if they have to leave a voice message, uh, and they don't check voice messages. But they'll DM you. Yes, they will. Okay. And as a leader, don't be a creep. Okay. Stay out of the minors' inboxes, please. All right. Don't do that. Don't be talking to little kids on social media. Talk to their parents first. But start a social media page. Most kids are on Instagram. Facebook is where you get the parents. Okay? That's where you get the parents. No kid is going to follow you on Snapchat. All right? And don't do the little silly TikTok dances either. Start a YouTube page. Okay? Start a YouTube page. We need to be on social media as youth leaders. Okay? It's a great way to stay connected. Uh, Sean, you were going to say something? Uh, man, just a quick question. Um, I, I, I guess I guess the answer is already. I mean, I guess it's already answered. But could you speak a little bit on basketball? Uh, I'm getting mixed. I think that I'm getting some mixed messages, and so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page uh, concerning when the church is open. Um, what's going on with that? Okay, there's, that, that's pretty simple. There's no basketball season, guys. Uh, you can die playing basketball. Um, NBA players play because they get millions and they've invested millions to stay healthy. Uh, church league don't got millions, okay? And we're not going to open up for churches to fight each other playing basketball and then everybody gets sick. So um, until I, and I know this may sound super conservative, but I don't want anybody to die. We're not going to be playing sports until there's a vaccine, folks. I, I, that's an that's easy sacrifice. COVID can kill you, okay? And, you know, people say, well, can we do it safely? You willing to take that risk for a church league game? No. So that's the mandate. That comes straight from conference president. Um, now, the churches are going to reopen, but even they're going to be phased. Um, even they're going to be phased. So if you hear of anyone starting a basketball league or playing basketball, they can't do it in the name of South Atlantic or in the name of your church. Okay. Um, my pathfinders are itching the camp. Can we camp? Can we, can we, you know, all get together and camp? You can't take that risk. You just can't take that risk. Does that answer your question, Sean? Yeah. 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 And and anyone who needs a letter from the conference, I, Sean, I still owe you a letter. Anybody needs a letter, we'll send you something to back that up. I I know people are getting anxious, but um, we have to make sure we protect everybody, and particularly the least of these. You know what I mean? The largest percentage of people in our church are over 55 who happened to me the most vulnerable when it comes to this disease, you know? And and you can't have grandma out at the, at the basketball game, you know, because it's easy to get sick that way for any of you. And then for what? To say we beat Sumter or we beat Columbia or we beat Greensboro, we beat West End? No, I miss basketball too, guys. I miss it. You know, you won't see me at your church until I get a shot, okay? And depending on who get elected, I might not get no shot, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Pastor Donovan? Yes, ma'am. Um, Bible Bowl. Um, right. Is Alicia still our coordinator for the Bible Bowl? Yes and no. We have some people in transition. And um, Alicia is taking care of herself right now. And so we're going to be talking soon about what's happening in the future. And we actually want to have a Bible Bowl event uh, soon online, okay? But she's uh, taking some personal time, and I support that, you know? And so uh, I'll be in touch with her soon. Okay. I just wanted to know, because uh, for 2021, um, I've already sort of put my calendar out there and some things that we're implementing and I, one of them was Bible, and so I just wanted to find out who I can contact in regards to that. Okay, uh, me right now. Okay. Okay, me right now. All right, anybody else? 
Okay. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And thank you for you. And let's keep working together. And never forget, if God be for us, who can be against us? Sister Lockett, I'm going to turn to you, Sister Chaplain, to bless us on the way out. Uh, if you could pray for us. And uh, thank you all for being a part of this. Keenan Lawson, thank you for being on. Uh, Opal Christie, all the people who didn't turn on their cameras, thank you for being mm -hmm. on. And uh, let's stay in touch. Let's stay in touch. And God is going to bless us. Sister Lockett, you there? Yes, and I'm going to leave this little tidbit. If you are always in your comfort zone, you are not where you need to be. Mercy. Let's lift our eyes and heart to the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come together for this time to discuss the things to enhance the AY youth business of our conference. Lord, everyone that came on today, we came on not just to listen, but to gather information. I pray that everything has been useful and helpful and that they can go back into their churches or AY program federation program and continue to build things for our youth. Lord, people used to say they were the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. And we need to make sure that we are helping them to be the very best church that they can be. Be with each leader on this line. Give a special blessing to our youth director. Continue to endow him with ways to encourage and help our youth go forward. Again, for allowing us to be part of this ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Amen. Thank you. Good night. Sorry, Good Falcons game, fans. Washington. Sorry, South okay. Falcons fans. They caught a bad L today. Sorry, guys. If you're a Falcons fan, they caught a horrible L All right, <laughs> today. Horrible. So, well, I guess I'll take I didn't watch it. Oh, it was terrible, man. They lost in the last minute. Terrible. So, what's up, Ryland? <laughs> so, <Steve Kels? laughs> God. He keeps God. coming back. So he have, have, a good weekend. have a good week, everybody. Y'all, too. Out. Out too. Let him come. What's up, young nature boy? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs>